Today on Tocant, we're doing a video on two very popular 39mm daily wear, the IWC Spitfire Automatic versus the Tudor Black Bay 58, the OG. So first, I'll give you a quick update on my uh, Spitfire after about five months of use, especially on the patina, and then we'll compare it to the uh, Black Bay 58 and see how they compare for two 39mm, but they wear quite differently. Hi everyone and welcome, I'm Ben. So first, I want to give you a quick update on the Spitfire Automatic after about five months now that I've been wearing it. Uh, I bought it early December, but I only um, packed it for Christmas and I've been wearing it for, since Christmas. So uh, about five months now, I'm shooting this mid-May. Um, so, you know, quite a few people have asked me in the comments, you know, what about the patina and what about the bronze and how it turned out uh, over the month, especially in Hong Kong with the sticky, humid weather. And uh, I want to say that it's turned out great. So first, let's talk about the patina. As you can see, uh, you know, I'll put a picture of the watch when I bought it and now, okay, it's it's gone darker. Obviously, it's, it has gone darker, especially as you can see, maybe the tips of the lugs have gone darker. Uh, and then you can also see the awesome spots on the case. Uh, but really, I have to say, it's not too bad at all. Um, and it's aged, I think, better than some of the uh, Tudor Black Bay 58 bronze that I've seen online that um, age uh, in quite in a, like a nasty dirty way with different stains on the case and the bracelets and this one has actually uh, aged I think in a homogeneous way um, so I quite like it uh, I'm not saying that I will uh, let it go darker and darker forever maybe after a year or so I'll have it cleaned or I'll clean it myself we'll see but so far I have to say I quite like the look um, so um, I was a, a bit apprehensive about um, bronze but in the end um, I'm quite happy with it so that's for the patina now uh, my overall feelings about the watch, I have to say that uh, it's turned out to be the most comfortable watch I own. First, it's the smallest. Okay, it's 39 millimeter, uh, but it's the smallest one that I have. I think the second one would be the first Omega in space, which is 39.7. It's also the thinnest, so it's 10.6 millimeter thin. It's very thin. It's also the lightest, I think, because uh, especially because it's on the strap, on a leather strap. I don't really feel it when I'm wearing it. Other things, I think it's uh, it's the most legible. I mean, this is very legible even from far away at a glance, half a second, you can tell the time. Uh, it has great loom at night, and um, because of you know the the the. The, the fact that it's bronze on the leather strap, it's also my most casual watch. So all in all, I'm very happy with it. I have to say it's my most comfortable watch. And because it's so thin and light, uh, when I wear it, especially when I was working in the office, I can't really feel that I'm wearing this watch. Um, it's like wearing, you know, maybe a ceramic watch. So uh, love it. Now let's compare it to the Tudor Black Bay 58, the almost perfect Black Bay 58, right? The OG. So I'm not gonna go into detail and do an in-depth review of that because there are already like a million gazillion of those. So you can go on YouTube and watch them. You probably already have. I just want to kind of compare them for those of you who are considering getting a 39 millimeter daily and uh, you're looking at the, both of them. So no, this is not my watch. Uh, yesterday after brunch, uh, my friend and I went to the AD because I wanted to take a look at the Pelagos LHD again and possibly the Pelagos FXT and also the Black Bay Pro. And they didn't have any of those, uh, but my friend was trying the Black Bay 58 and I kind of convinced him to get it and then put it under my name in terms of purchase history so hopefully I told the guy you know that will help me to uh, get an FXD or Black Bay Pro or an LHD a little bit faster so yeah a bit cheeky there but uh, you know you gotta do what you gotta do so uh, if we compare them both 39 millimeter uh, in terms of diameter but you can see or at least I think that the Spitfire wears bigger that's because obviously it doesn't have a bezel and so the dial is much bigger and to me uh, it wears bigger it's also um, I think more legible um, lug to lug is 50 millimeter on the Spitfire, whereas it's 47.5 on the uh, Black Bay 58. So it's gonna also uh, look a little bit bigger on the wrist. For me, you know, I have no problem. I think I can wear up to 52 lug to lug. Uh, but for some of you, maybe that's a consideration. Now, uh, a, a big difference, I think, it's in terms of thickness. So the Spitfire is 10.6 millimeter thin, and which is very thin. It's my thinnest watch, as I said. Whereas the Black Bay 58 is 11.9. So that's not thick by any means. 
means, but it's about 12 millimeter, and that's like an average thickness for a three-hander. So my Datejust 2 is 12 millimeter, and uh, you know I can tell when it's on the wrist that it's thicker. And this one, it's the, it's the same story, right? When I wear the Spitfire, uh, it's so thin that I kind of forget that it's on my wrist. And so uh, luckily it's thin so that I don't bang it against the door or anything. Um, because I forget that I'm wearing it. But the uh, Black Bay 58, you, 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 you can tell that it's there, 12 millimeter, you know, it's not nothing. And of course, there's a difference in terms of weight. I know it's not fair because the Spitfire is on the leather strap and the uh, BB-8 is on the 58 is on the, is on the strap. But the Black Bay 58 is gonna be much heavier, obviously. Now, that affects comfort. And even though I'm a bracelet guy and I always say that I wanna get a watch on a bracelet if it's available, but after wearing the Spitfire almost daily over the past five months, I have to say that it's so comfortable that I'm kind of changing my mind sometimes. And um, the Black Bay 58 I found when wearing it since yesterday, um, I, f I almost find it quite heavy at times. So I'm sure I will get used to it, but that's something I wanted to mention. Now, in terms of uh, movement, what's inside, very similar. Both are very good in-house movements, very similar. So the Spitfire comes with a 3210 uh, Richmond Group movement with 72 hour power reserve, you know, full balance bridge, silicone hairspring, um, special lubricant, so you can service it every 10 years, and then a magic lever, kind of a peloton a winding system uh, derived from the peloton. Uh, whereas the Black Bay 58 has the Kennedy uh, in-house, 70 hour power reserve, also full balance bridge you know silicon hair spring same so the difference is that the black b58 is cosc certified so minus four plus six whereas the speedfire uh, is not what they do so it's zero plus nine which seems like uh, you know there's there's nine nine seconds there so it's not as uh, precise but the way iwc looks at it is that uh, it will not run um slow it can only run fast so um, that's their guarantee there uh, for me, uh, you know, accuracy is not the most important, uh, but for those of you uh, who uh, prioritize accuracy, maybe uh, Black Bay 58 is doing a little better there. The FXD, by the way, is, is doing even better because they are, they are, they are guaranteeing minus 2 plus 4, so it's even better than COSC. Just, just mentioning on the side. Now, in terms of differences, um, we have to talk about water resistance, of course. So the Spitfire is only 60 meter water resistance, which is perfectly fine for me as a daily wearer, especially when I was wearing it in the office. I mean, there's no problem. I don't take my watches in the water anyway, so I'm fine with it. But um, if you're concerned about water resistance, then of course the Black Bay 58 being a diver has 200 meter water resistance. So that's, uh, that's that, I guess. Um, at least at retail, at least on paper. So the, they're both had increased prices recently. The IWC uh, Spitfire retails now for 5,300 US dollars plus tax. And the Black Bay 58 retails for 3,000 US dollars, 3,800 US dollars plus tax. Now, you're probably not gonna be able to get a discount or much of a discount at an AD if you find a Black Bay 58. Uh, my friend did not get any discount at all. Um, we were lucky to find one, uh, especially the black one. I can kind of see uh, a few blue ones in the windows here and there, but the black one is still hard to find, so um, lucky to get it at, at retail. But the AWC, of course, definitely you're gonna get some discount. Uh, I bought mine at a, a big discount, so in the end, the prices uh, will not be too far apart. Uh, and of course, the third difference is how they wear, like I've already mentioned it, you know, I think the AWC uh, wears bigger. Okay, sorry about that, I just cut off the video because I realized I should probably show you a wrist shot when I say that the IWC wears bigger. So this is how it wears. So my wrist is 6.75 inches or 17 centimeters. Um, I feel like it wears a little bit bigger, maybe you might feel differently. Um, now. Another thing is the AWC, I think, is much more casual. Uh, you can see in terms of finishing, so the Black Bay 58, you know, has those bevel on the on the side, uh, and it has those, like, polished uh, case flanks, which I don't, I'm not totally in love with. I think it would look better with a brushed um, side, and then the bevel, you know, would stand out more. Uh, whereas, of course, the IWC um, has a fully, like, kind of um, satinized or bit blasted kind of uh, finishing with no beveling. But I have to say that if you go with the stainless steel version, the standard version, and I'm sure like most people would probably go for the standard stainless steel version, that one has a brushed case with also a beveling. Uh, so it's gonna look a lot more similar to the Black Bay 58, but just that it will have a brushed um, side of the case. I'm actually thinking that eventually if I get tired of the bronze one, I might actually swap it for the stainless steel version. So, um, 
in the end, you know, you, you, you can go wrong. Like I said, they're both great. Um, it has reinforced my feeling, though, that I don't think I would get the Black Bay 58. There are a few things that I'm not uh, in love with, like these polished flanks or maybe the bracelet. So, which is why I'm still waiting to um, look at the Pelagos FXD, the Black Bay Pro, the LHD, I've already tried it, so I know what it feels like. But I'm kind of leaning toward the FXD now. So let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, once again, you know, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one.